Baruch Hashem Yah, Baruch Hashem Yehoshua, Baruch Hashem Yehoshua. Shalom, family. Today's lesson is titled, uh, The Arrows of Yah's Deliverance. And the um, reason why I picked that title is because we're going to come out of Second Kings, and we're going to kind of go through some of the scriptures here and, and see what they mean to us today and the importance of continually to petition Yah for what we desire. Um, it's important to not give up on a thing if you're praying to Yah. Um, don't get weary if you don't see it happening and, and don't think that you're, you know, bothering Yah too much or that if you continue to pray for a thing that you're not having faith. Um, the scriptures teach us, and we'll start with that, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, to pray without ceasing. And this is going to be the foundation of what we're talking about today. Okay, praying without ceasing and how that kind of is symbolically represented here um, in the story of uh, Yoash, king of Israel, um, who was being uh, basically attacked by uh, the king of Aram because Yah would send these groups upon Israel, uh, both Judah and Israel, because the kingdom was split at that, at that point for idolatry and disobedience, which was rampant in, in Israel even to this day. Uh, um, and, but he would have compassion on, on his people in the midst of them, uh, continuing to disobey and to do wrong in his sight. And Elijah, the prophets were used to, uh, you know, deliver messages or, um, facilitate his will in the land. Now, this, uh, particular story coming out of second Kings, um, uh, 13th chapter, um, is Yoash, king of Israel, coming to Elijah for help because he was under attack, okay, by the king of Aram. And we're going to go through what happened here and, again, how it, how it applies to us today, okay? And, again, the whole foundation of this is, is pray without ceasing. We can't give up on a thing because it's been a while or thinking that, oh, you know, prayed a couple of times, that, that that's enough, um, Yah wants us to continue to communicate with him on, on a thing and not give up on that thing until we see its completion. Okay. Um, this enhances our prayer life and understand that we have to continue to communicate with Yah. We have to keep it before him. Um, and it's something that we have to practice because you may get tired. You may get tired of praying a certain thing over and over again. You're not necessarily seeing it come to pass. And, you know, of course, the enemy comes in. Well, you know, that's, that's not something you need to be praying for or you know it's not going to happen or you know you're not having faith because if something's going on that's negatively impacting you um yeah i want you to come to him okay um the whole point uh is yeah i want to enhance our prayer life he wants to enhance our faith he wants to show us that he will show up for us and when he sets the stage for these things because like i always said that you know nothing happens to like, yeah you did not write this day then there's a reason for it sometimes he just wants you to pray more and work on you with that so it'll be a thing that you're constantly praying for and he will come through once he feels you or where he wants you to be okay um so you have to continually pray about that thing about what's what you desire about what's going on because there are things that are going on and there will always be something that you have to pray for because um you know yeah never wants us to be in a position where we're not praying for something whether we're thanking him or praising him or needing something, uh, we have to know where, we, where we're getting this from and, and the importance of it, okay? So, and, and again, you don't want it to be tied to, to disobedience on your part. Now, that's not, I'm not saying that. We need to obey Yah. Uh, we need to understand that he is, is who we need to be serving, okay? Because uh, even when the kings would serve Yah, things were still going on that they prayed for and wanted guidance on and Yah would deliver them. <laughs> But uh, you don't want to come to it from a point of disobedience. So we're going to just focus on what what uh, Elijah instructed Yoash to do. Okay? Um, and we're going to apply it to our lives today. That's important. Okay? So we're going to start in 2 Kings uh, 13, verse 14. And Elijah had become sick with the sickness in which he died. And Yoash, sovereign of Israel, came down to him. And wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. 
And Elijah said to him, take a bow and some arrows. And he took a bow and some arrows. So, okay, we're getting some instruction here. Okay. And, you know, bow and arrows, are, are it's a weapon, right? So, you know, you shoot those at people. We have to understand that our prayers work the same way. Um, that we have to, we are fighting, right? So we are fighting a spiritual war here. Uh, what we get, see, but the things that come up on us, that there is a spiritual uh, component to it. There is a spiritual source that you cannot see. I mean, even if it's a certain person coming at you. Um, reality is a spiritual uh, origin origination. Okay, so where this originated, where the source is coming from, is a spiritual one. You know, if, if, if the enemy, if the devil is allowed to use a person, um, allowed or sent, like I said, to use a person or a circumstance against you, uh, you understand that there is a its inception or its its its, its uh, I guess power source is coming from a spiritual place. Okay. So we have to employ spiritual weapons in order to defeat this. That's why if we look at this scenario here, what happened here, these, these arrows, he didn't shoot anybody with them. He didn't touch anybody with them. He used them, but not in the way you think they should be used. So understand that they were symbolic, okay? And um, we have spiritual weapons, okay? We have spiritual bowls and arrows, when we pray, when we fast, when we have the faith we need to have, when we are steadfast, when we have patience, uh, you know, these are weapons against the enemy and weapons against wickedness. Okay, so the bows and arrows are, are symbolic of our weapons, which you know, prayer, fasting, uh, you know, um, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, all those are weapons. Okay. So he took a bow and some arrows. He said to the sovereign Israel, place your hand on the bow. Place his hand on the bow. Okay. And then Elijah placed his hands on the hands of the king. Um, then he told him, open the east window. Okay. So these are instructions are going on here. He opened the window. He said, shoot. Then he shot. Now this is real important what happened here after that. Then he said, the arrow of deliverance of Yahuwah and the arrow of deliverance from Aram. This is symbolic, this arrow. Some, a, a declaration was made. Okay. So we want to have that as part of our prayer, okay? A declaration of uh, deliverance over whatever it is. I will be delivered of this sickness. I'll be delivered of, of, of this infirmity. I will, you know, get a better job. I will, you know, finish what I started. I'll, my children will be successful, or have uh, deliverance over this or that and the third. Whatever it is, a statement should be made, okay? We're just following a pattern here. Um, started and i believe it's very important to follow these patterns like yeah you know we bless you through faith and, and prayer and fasting and, and we have to have that but let's start to make a declaration okay uh prior to praying for something let's start it okay and even if you're in the midst of praying for something now just make that declaration i will have deliverance over this yeah i will deliver me from this. Y'all will fix this. Y'all will defeat my enemies. Y'all will give me the things that I, I need. Y'all will give me power to overcome this. So make those statements. Okay. Then after that declaration, then you start your prayer. And so once the declaration was made, okay, he said, Hey, this is living from Aaron for you will smite around and affect until it is finished. Now, that last part is important until it is finished. This was meant to be complete, but something happened. We're going to look at what happened here that made it not complete. Okay. So he said in verse 18, Elisha said to the king, take the arrows. And he took them. He said to the sovereign of Israel, strike the ground. Okay. And he struck three times and stopped. And this is important. We don't want to do that. We don't want to pray a few times and stop. Oh, get tired and say, oh, it's enough. Oh, it hasn't happened. So, uh, you know, it's out there. Well, whatever. It's whatever. Because you, you, you're you not then continuing, as the scripture teaches us, the first, the first Thessalonians 5, pray without ceasing. Okay? So if you're at that point where you're saying, oh, it's whatever, you know, it, it, it'll happen. Get back on that prayer. Get back on it. 
to continue to pray for it as you did at the first. Because if it has not happened yet, then you still need to be praying. You understand? Um, you can't strike the ground and then stop. So he struck the ground a few times and stopped. Now look what happened after this. Uh, the man of Elohim was wroth. So you have to understand that the, the prophets, um, their emotions were tied to Yah. So there were things that would come from Yah, they would feel it. So that anger he was feeling was Yah's anger. All right. And he was wroth. He was upset and said, you should have smitten five or six times. Then you would have smitten Aram until, until it's utter destruction. And at five or six times, it's symbolic. That means you, it, that's a symbolic number. You just keep on going. Pray without ceasing. It, it's, it's kind of uh, the riddle or the mystery of this is, is, is unfolded or revealed to us in First Thessalonians. Pray without ceasing. Don't stop until the situation is totally complete. Keep on praying. Keep on praying about it. Keep it before Yah. He's not forgetful or anything. You just have to continue to petition him because he wants you to. All right. So we cannot stop. It says here, but now you should smite Aram only three times. And that's exactly what happened. It wasn't complete. Okay. And the, the purpose of this is to understand that Yah wants to give you complete deliverance. Not halfway, not a little bit, not temporary. We have to keep praying to Yah. Keep it before Him, whatever it is. And I always say, you know, it's been tough times and we're in tough times. And tougher times are coming. Because it's, it's prophesied things that are happening and things will, will get worse. But He will protect and shield His people. But not without us continually praying, being obedient, and, and staying before Him. Um, we have to. It should be a daily thing for us. We we give prayer, prayer of praise. We have to praise him. We have to thank him. We have to do those things. But then you have to petition him for the things that are happening because something's happening with all of us. Something that we need to pray for with all of us. There's nobody sitting there that doesn't need to pray. No one. No no one in Israel or who else who's serving Yah is sitting there without having to pray for something. Because this is a thing that Yah wants to continually hear us do, rely on him. Okay? It's a good thing to need him. And it's a good thing to continue to petition him. Okay, and, and, and that's not happening enough. I think, you know, you get to the point where you feel, okay, yeah, yeah, that's enough. Um, you know, you start to um run out of steam on praying and waiting. Uh and the trying of your faith work if work and patience doesn't complete okay um waiting doesn't mean just sitting there doing nothing while you wait you're praying you're asking you're believing you're obeying um and if you stop doing those things you're going to run into problems especially if you stop obeying but you have to pray without ceasing if you want a thing complete all right. So if it's something that hasn't happened yet or hasn't isn't complete yet and you kind of stop praying about it like you used to, you need to get back on that. Get back on praying about it now. Make that declaration too. That this is a prayer of deliverance and Yah is going to deliver me. He's going to fix this. He's going to change this. And, and mean that. And don't fall into that mistake of stopping too soon okay that's why the scripture is there for us to pray without ceasing these things are meaningful to us we need to understand that that's the way we live we're going to continue to pray we have to in order to get what we desire from the most high yah and actually he's training us for the battle because our battle was spiritual more than anything and prayer is our main weapon. Understanding what the situation is, praying uh, focused prayers on certain uh, circumstances, okay, in order for Yah to effect change in our lives and defeat our enemy, which has a spiritual source. Uh, there's a spiritual power 
um, and spiritual origination of, you know, physically manifested things, but you have to attack it on a spiritual level and it will then manifest itself physically uh, in our lives. You can't do it the other way around. Attack the physical and then the spiritual going to somehow be changed. It changes on the spiritual side. The defeat, the, the fleeing is the devil fleeing. And when the devil flees, then the enemies that you can see, they flee as well. They fall away. They shut their mouth. They vanish. You know, they're not here anymore in some cases. Um, their situation falls apart. But it has to happen on the spiritual side first. So we have to keep praying. We have to keep believing. We have to keep petitioning. And, and without ceasing, okay? That's uh, basically what the foundation of this is. So stay in the Word. Continue to read. Continue to grow. Until next time, hallelujah. And may I have a blessing to his word. Mm -hmm.